Good evening and welcome. This is a regular meeting of the Princeton Planning Board on Thursday, May 16th, 2024. Pursuant to Section 13 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of the time and place of this meeting has been given by prominently posting the resolution of regularly scheduled meetings of the Planning Board of Princeton for February 2024 through January 2025. A copy was filed with the Clerk of Princeton on January 8th, 2024. Legal notice on the adoption of said resolution was published in the January 12th, 2024 edition of the Princeton Packet. Notice of this meeting has also been posted to the municipal website, www.princetonnj.gov calendar. Notice that all regular and special meetings of the Princeton Planning Board will be held electronically via, via, via Zoom was transmitted to the Princeton Packet and the Times and was filed with the Clerk of Princeton on Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. During hearings on applications for development, members of the public will have an opportunity to comment and ask questions. Questions may be asked after an applicant's witnesses have testified. Public comment is heard by the board after an applicant's representatives have finished their presentations and have been questioned by the planning board members and staff. Those wishing to comment orally should virtually raise your hand by clicking on the reactions or raise hand icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or if participating by phone, by pressing star nine. Oral comments will be taken in the order in which hands were raised. We ask with respect that members of the public express your views in three minutes or less. We will have a countdown clock to help speakers keep track of time. Please note that speakers who exceed three minutes will be interrupted. Inappropriate public comment containing obscenity, hate speech, or relating to matters not before the board will be muted. Ms. Phillip, will you please take the roll? Certainly. <clears throat> Mr. Bodenheimer? Ms. Capazzoli? Here. Mr. Cohen? Here. Mr. McGowan? Here. Ms. Nuka? Here. Ms. Perlmutter? Here. Ms. Sachs? Mr. Taylor? Here. Ms. Wilson Anderson? Mrs. Wilson? And Mr. O'Donnell? Here. We have, a, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, for any of our participants who are, just, who are tuning in tonight to hear the Estate Shore 479 Jefferson Road continuation from April 18th, that portion of our meeting has been postponed. Uh, no date has been set uh, as for when that will resume. Uh, I understand that the applicant will have to re-notice when a new date is set. Um, or we recommend that people check their the municipal calendar uh, at the at the homepage www.princetonnj.gov. Um, are there any announcements tonight? Justin, do you have any? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, uh, Chairman, Mr. Chair. Uh, Sir Chair, uh, <laughs> uh, outside of that announcement, uh, which was noticed on the application, and I think that worked um, to, you know, maybe the people who were interested in that case saw uh, that uh, on the agenda and and might have taken note of it. Um, just two other announcements. Uh, the chair, uh, the vice chair, and myself uh, will meet again with the uh, municipal attorney in the next week or so to discuss revisions to the board's bylaws. Yeah, there's a process that's been going on for some time now. Um, and hopefully that's you know our last meeting before sending that to the procedures committee uh, for them to review and then ultimately to bring something to the full board uh, for a vote on any changes to those bylaws. Uh, so just an update, but you'll start seeing more of that hopefully soon. Great. Uh, and one other announcement. Uh, so the 344 Nassau Street LLC application scheduled for the special meeting for next Thursday will not be heard that night. Um, there's no date set now for when they're coming back, uh, but it has been postponed from next week. Uh, I spoke with the chair uh, and she said the meeting can be canceled. Uh, so we will send out information about that uh, regarding next week's meeting or lack thereof. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Justin. 
Um, moving on to subcommittee meetings, I don't believe there have been any meetings since our last. Uh, there was a uh, site plan. Yes, David. Yeah, I was just going to mention we were scheduled to have a site plan meeting yesterday, but we um, failed to get a quorum. So um, Ian is working on finding a, a follow up date that works for people. Okay, terrific. And uh, no other subcommittee meetings have taken place? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, minutes of the regular meeting of October 19th, 2023. Uh, I know that some editorial corrections have been made uh, and submitted to the minutes. Kerry, do we need to read those into the record? Yes, and I can do that if you would like me to, or you okay. can. Please. Okay. Um, on page three, there was one of the references made to Zoom, and one of my references did not capitalize the first initial for Zoom, and that will be done. Uh, on page seven, third line from the bottom, I added the word is after municipality, so it said the municipality is in the process. And the beginning of that uh, sentence actually was a statement by Mr. Lesko. Uh, that's the only uh, edits that I have. Right. Does anybody there have are any any, others? I'm sorry. Any other comments or amendments to the minutes from October 19th? Okay. Not seeing anybody. Would someone like to make a motion to accept the minutes? David, so thank moved. you very much. David Cohen making the motion and a second. Second. Alvin McGowan, thank you very much for making this section, the section, the, the second. Uh, Curry, would you like to, do we take a vote on this or do we just- Yes, a voice? yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Capazzoli? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Uh, Ms. Sachs? Oops, sorry. Mr. Taylor? Yes. And Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Okay, motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, our next item is the findings of fact for Princeton Academy of the Sacred Heart. This was a meeting held. Yes, David. Yeah, I actually want to request um, that we um, carry this to our next meeting. I have one or two items that I'd like to consult with uh, legal counsel offline about before we bring it to a vote. And um, I spoke with Justin about it. I think he would, he was okay with it. But. Okay. Certainly. Um, does anybody have any, any questions or any other comments to be made? If not, then we will uh, carry this to our next meeting. Not seeing any, uh, we will put that on the agenda for our next meeting uh, so that David can, can resolve the questions that he has. Thank you very much for that, David. Thank you. Okay, um, then we'll move right along to our application for this evening. Uh, we, uh, our application for tonight is um, from 10 Acre Foundation. It is a modification to a major site, site development located at 884 and 953 Great Road. That is block 3501, lot eight, and block 3601, lot one. The file number is P2424-449PD. Uh, Jerry, do we have jurisdiction and proper notice? Notice is proper. And um, Carrie, if you could confirm that the proof of publication and service are in order. Everything is in order, yes. The board therefore has jurisdiction. Terrific, thank you very much. Uh, We'll be hearing from, on the uh, staff side, Justin, I believe Justin Lesko is here, Dan Weissman and Joe Scoopian. I saw here before, there he is, right. Um, so uh, if you people can activate your cameras and be sworn in by Jerry, since this is being considered a new application. Right, exactly. If you could raise your right hands, the three staff members, do you swear or affirm that testimony about to give will be the truth? Yes, I do. And uh, Dan, you, you here? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. So it's one. Okay. Justin, you want to 
Justin and Dan, you want to take it away? Certainly. Um, I could give us a, a very brief introduction before handing it over to Dan, um, if you don't mind me sharing my screen. And it's loading. Uh, what you're seeing before you is uh, from the Rowan University uh, NJ Parcel Map uh, that's publicly available online, NJ Parcel Explorer, excuse me. The subject property is in the blue outline, uh, block 3501. Uh, oh, excuse me. I think I am. I think I'm just off on this. No. 35018. Yeah, it's not. Uh, is it no. the large one in the middle? I'm sorry. You actually have it right, Justin. The one with the solar panels is the original project. And then across the street in the main campus is the additional mitigation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and we'll mark that just electronically uh, as exhibit PB1. And mm -hmm. Justin, if you could repeat again what it is. Sure. So this is uh, uh, aerial imagery from the NJ Parcel Explorer uh, created by Rowan University and hosted online publicly. Thank you. Uh, and as you can see, the 10 Acre Foundation's uh, subject property uh, is off of Great Road, uh, just after where it forks, um, near Stewart Road. Uh, it's adjacent to the Princeton Day School, or near at least, uh, and the Stewart Country Day School is nearby. Um, the application is for a modification to an approval by the Planning Board in 2021, which included new residential buildings and a multi-purpose building, uh, as well as related walkways, driveways, and parking areas. Um, so with that being said, I will turn it to Mr. Weissman to do the heavy lifting on this modification application. <laughs> Let's go. Um, just to briefly run through, uh, so this application is for a modification of uh, an approved major site development. Um, the request tonight would memorialize the removal of two stormwater variances that were granted on the original approval. Uh, and it would also uh, approve a revised stormwater management mitigation plan associated with those variances. Uh, to provide some project history in relation to the modification, uh, the development utilizes four stormwater management basins located at the four corners of the site. Uh, and due to technical and environmental site constraints, these basins did not qualify as green infrastructure. Uh, variance release, relief from the stormwater uh, control ordinance was required and approved for each of these basins. In accordance with the uh, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, uh, their stormwater management rules variances from the stormwater regulations can only be granted if a mitigation project is also approved with the variance. Uh, the applicant uh, supplied and, and the mitigation that was approved utilized an existing basin, basin uh, on the west side of Great Road uh, that had sufficient capacity to account for the required mitigation. The application before the board tonight has revised the two easternmost basins to qualify as green infrastructure, uh, the, thus negating the two variances for those basins. The two westernmost basins cannot be revised and the variance approval would still stand. As such, the applicant is proposing a new revised mitigation project in the form of a small-scale bioretention basin located across Great Road. The mitigation project meets the DEP requirements and has been reviewed by the municipality stormwater management consultant, Joe Scoopian, who's also here tonight. Uh, and we are available if there are any questions. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mr. Scoopian, do you have anything to add? Joe, um, when I swore in the, the staff members, we, we I, I didn't hear you um, basically. <laughs> so sworn. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Probably was muted. Okay. No, really, Dan did a great job. Uh, we're we're here to to ask for approval, uh, or the applicants here to ask for approval um, of variances for two of the four basins rather than the originally approved variance for all four basins. I have to give credit both to uh, Tom Fick at Carroll Engineering, the, the the site engineer, and to Ten Acre for trying real hard and succeeding in in uh, coming up with making two of the four basins finally do finally do meet green infrastructure so therefore do not need variances and also for coming up with a a really good new mitigation project to to mitigate the effects of the two basins the two remaining basins that do need the variance so we're going from four to two 
Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for our staff members? Not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, welcome to you and your team. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Nice um, to you here tonight. Um, again, uh, once we're, uh, since we are considering this as a new application, we're going to have to square in your uh, your expert witnesses as well as uh, qualify them this evening. Uh, happy to, Mr. Chairman. Um, we'll have two witnesses as planned this evening. Um, uh, Thomas Fick, um, as Mr. Scoopian noted, uh, is our engineer. Uh, and Pete Hatherell um, will be our uh, witness from Ten Acre Foundation. And you might have, some of you might remember from the 2021 application. So if we can have both of them. Um, and we also have Tom Lind um, from uh, the foundation as well. I don't think we need any testimony from him, but might as well swear them all in together just in case. Sounds if, like a great idea. If the three, you can raise your right hand. Do you, do you swear or affirm that testimony you're about to give will be the truth? I do. So sworn. Well, thank you all um, for hearing us tonight. My name is Ryan Kennedy from uh, Stevens and Lee down on Princeton Pike in, in Lawrenceville here for the Applicant 10 Acre Foundation. Uh, as as Mr. Lesko and Mr. Weissman, uh, Mr. Scubian noted, uh, this was a project that we uh, were really proud of in 2021 for 10 Acre Foundation. Um, uh, we called it the residential cottages and there was the multi-purpose uh, building uh, for use on campus. Uh, there are a lot of uh, environmentally friendly and kind of innovative uh, practices engaged, but ultimately this was the first application that was heard with under the new stormwater rules. Um, and I think we're all, um, no pun intended, still getting our feet wet with how it worked. Um, and as as you heard, there were four variances granted, one for each of these bio, of these basins. And um, after the fact, as the project was being built, uh, the staff and Ten Acre Foundation have been working towards eliminating as many of those variances as possible. And then ultimately for two of them that really couldn't be changed sufficiently, providing the additional mitigation measures uh, that turns out DEP wanted to see uh, with the grant of those variances. Um, <clears throat> we'll have two witnesses and one set of um, exhibits. Uh, if we could, I'll be happy to share my screen and mark what we've got as 12 slides as, as our one exhibit this evening, if that's all right. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And that'll be A1. Thank you. Um, and with that, I'd like to uh, reintroduce or introduce for the first time, if uh, you weren't here for the 2021 application, uh, Pete Hatherell uh, from the Ten Acre, Ten Acre Foundation, uh, who uh, I'd like to ask have him explain his role um, uh, as, as a uh, helping with uh, special projects at this point. So this might be one of his last times before you guys as we transition into some new leadership there. Thanks, Ryan, and good evening, everyone. So, yes, I'm Pete Hatherell, and I'm the project. I was the uh, project um, coordinator for this building project for Ten Acre, um, and recently, uh, just in the process of retiring from Ten Acre after a long and happy work life there, um, and now acting as a consultant to um, help this uh, project uh, of the mitigation. So as has been mentioned in 2021, the planning board, many of you um, approved this project and uh, now the project is finished and we're really enjoying using the spaces. It's complete and it's sensitive landscaping, beautiful functioning buildings. And we appreciate the environmentally intuitive design that includes solar panels on the campus community center, the multi-purpose building roof. And the way the buildings fit into the landscape beautifully with minimal lighting and the extensive use of pervious services. These buildings serve the staff and residents at Ten Acre, both as homes and a place for the staff and campus community to meet. During the project, the New Jersey Department of Environment determined that mitigation was required due to the stormwater outflows in two of the locations. And we've worked with Tom Fick, our civil engineer, and the professionals at Princeton to find a location and a design that would meet the requirements of the DEP and fit appropriately in our existing campus. And I have to say the collaboration um, 
between Tom Fick and the Princeton professionals has been so appreciated um, by, by Tenacre. Uh, it really has taken a great deal of thought and work and design and to see um, the, uh, the professionalism of the folks here in Princeton, the staff um, and their willingness to work with us um, to try and uh, take an existing stormwater um, system and make it uh, appropriate for this, um, we're just really very grateful for. Thank you, Pete. Um, as we often do, I'd like to kind of slip through our, step through our slides and kind of orient the board to where we are uh, in the former Princeton Township. So uh, Pete, on slide two here, uh, that arrow is kind of pointing generally to uh, where the 10 acre campus is. Yes, that's right. Pretty much the main the main island there. Um, moving to slide three, it's uh, Princeton's newer um, zoning map. Uh, I guess the left arrow, that's is that 884? Yes, road? that's that's a site where the cottages and the multi-purpose building have been built and the stormwater retention basins are. And the bigger blue arrow points to the main campus where the mitigation project will take place. Slide four, uh, similar to the um, photo that uh, Mr. Lesko showed, but uh, I guess this up here, uh, if you can see my cursor, that's 884. You can see the exit, the um, solar panel project and and or the cottages uh, were to be built um and then the main campus here on the other side of the street yes yeah um so next um this was the caption of what was approved in 2021 but uh, this was a one of the preliminary uh exhibits of what we thought this would look like when constructed and then uh pete uh, this is some photos of of, of what it actually looks like built. Do you want to take the, the board through, uh, um, you know, what, what, what was constructed here and, and sure. uh, how it's used? Absolutely. So on the left-hand side, you can see some images of the, uh, the cottages that were built. There are three cottage blocks and they were very much built in the style of a, a, a modern village. Um, and also that they would be appropriate for the existing house, which you can see in the, uh, the, bottom center that they took architectural cues from those um, and they've proved to be very good very efficient um, great design of space and the people who are now uh, living in those spaces really appreciate them um, for their their efficiency their location on the campus uh, and the uh, the design within the village and then on the bottom right, you can see the multi-purpose building, uh, a beautiful building, which um, it fits right in the landscape. And when you're in there, you, you literally have a wall of glass all around you. Um, so it feels very much like you are within the pastoral bucolic landscape that's up there. Um, thank you, Pete. Um, with that, if the board has any questions um, operationally or about the existing project that was constructed, happy to... Uh, make Mr. Atherell uh, available now. Uh, otherwise, we'd move to our uh, engineering testimony. I see no questions, no hands raised. So let's move on to Mr. Fick. All right. Uh, Tom, I know you've, you've definitely testified many times before this board before, including on this project that was approved in 2021. But uh, this is a new application. If you could briefly give the board um, the benefit of your credentials um, uh, so we can have you uh, accepted as an expert here tonight. So, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Fick, uh, Thomas Fick. Uh, I'm with Carroll Engineering. I've been with Carroll uh, for over 25 years. I'm a licensed uh, engineer in the state of uh, New Jersey, as well as Pennsylvania. I'm also a lead accredited professional. Um, I testified in front of this board, as well as other boards throughout the state of New Jersey, and I've been working for 10 Acre for uh, sometime in the late 90s, I believe, when I was first uh, brought on to um, uh, to the properties here. And uh, so I have uh, vast knowledge of, of 10 acres uh, um, improvements and infrastructure. Um, and I was the uh, lead engineer on the um, uh, residential cottages and uh, multi-purpose uh, application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Pete, I'm sorry, Mr. Fick, can you please speak a little clearer into your mic? There was a little garbled. Yes. Sure. Thank you, Carrie. All right. So I I, I think, Mr. Chair, I, I heard the back and forth, the, the acceptance of, of Mr. Fick. If, uh, you did. I heard that right. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, Tom, if you could, we're on slide seven here. I, I think we've got 
uh, a map from your plans clip that shows the original project location on with the left arrow and then a bigger arrow showing the main campus and then on, on the right i suppose that that's the rendering of what was proposed kind of showing where on the zoomed in map those cottages were built Go ahead. we have that right that is correct yes Slide eight, now kind of zooming in a little bit on the mitigation site. Um, tell us what we're kind of looking at here on, on the right. So um, the area on the right is a uh, grass area um, that's occupied by actually a bioretention swale that was created back in 2010, I believe, or uh, between 2010, 2012. Um, that was actually a bioretention swale designed under a former um, edition of the stormwater rules. Um, however, most of the area is primarily grass. Um, and uh, that swale does pick up um, um, surfaces, uh, both impervious and pervious surfaces um, on the main campus, uh, draining uh, from the north into the swale, which then eventually leads into uh, the existing bioretention basin uh, on uh, 80, uh, at the location of 884 Great Road. So next, moving to slide nine. I guess this is a, this is portion of the plans for that mitigation area. You want to take the board through what what you actually designed and and are building here. Sure. So this this is our um, design of our of our mitigation um, basin. So it's a bioretention basin. Uh, generally going to follow the the alignment of the existing bioretention uh, swale that's there. It's going to effectively replace it. Um, it's designed in accordance with the uh, New Jersey stormwater rules. Um, it contains an under drain. It contains bioretention mix, a sand layer, um, and, um, and it'll be uh, seeded, um, planted with, with, with a variety of uh, bioretention type of, um, of plantings. Uh, it, it's, uh, it fits in nicely um, in that open space grass area. Um, it will, um, it meets the stormwater rules because it is um, in the same uh, Huck 14 watershed uh, as our, as our uh, other project across the street. Um, in order for the, for a mitigation project to be uh, considered, um, it needs to be um, also needs to be uh, the same discharge in the same water court to the same water course and also located upstream from our from our um, uh, development that is subject to the variance. Um, so therefore, this was an ideal location. It's right across the street. Uh, it's an unused piece of land. Um, uh, ultimately, 10 acre would love to eliminate it in terms of lawn maintenance. Um, it is being cut now um, constantly. So now it's, it'll just become a uh, more or less a, 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 you know, slight depression in the ground, vegetated. Uh, I know 10 acre will, will do an exceptional job of landscaping um, on this, uh, um, you know, in this, in this uh, facility. Um, and uh, so this was an action, this was actually a great location for it. It does pick up the uh, upstream water, upstream drainage area uh, from the site. It does pick up, uh, it, it not only mitigates for the, for the areas that are um, uh, for the variants, but also it, it does uh, effectively treat the entire drainage area um, uh, from uh, from the upstream um, portion of the site. Uh, so, so what we have here is a is a, uh, a small scale green infrastructure basin um, that's uh, in accordance uh, with the with the current storm Thank you, Tom. Um, next, uh, we've got a kind of a, a visual tour, I think, of the of the basins um, on the 884 site, the four basins and some of the other um, mitigation materials. So, if you want to probably just drive a little bit about what they're what we're looking at here. What we're looking at we're looking at is the four uh, basins that we designed on um, the 884 project. Uh, the top left is the uh, basin at the front. Um, is one of the basins up front. Uh, that was one of the basins that we modified to remove the variances. Uh, the one on the lower right is the other basin near the front uh, of the property that we also modified to eliminate the variances. The other two basins uh, on the bottom of the slide, the one on the left 
um, and the one on the right, uh, they're both due to the proximity of wetlands and transition areas and also uh, topography, we were unable to revise those basins to, to comply uh, with green infrastructure standards. Therefore, um, they are the subject of variance, of okay. two variances. And, and top right, just because I, I think we all thought it was neat from, from the original approval, but this is uh, uh, the, the pervious pavement that's kind of been kind of tucked into uh, the, the cartways uh, on the project? Well, the intent of this, uh, this is the ribbon drive. Uh, this is the intent to minimize uh, the amount of impervious on site. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to create uh, a concrete surface so that we wouldn't have that heat island, heat island effect um, it's a one-way drive that loops uh, around the new development. Um, and the purpose of the, uh, the gap in between the stone is just that the, the intent was that the ribbons would, would flow into the, the middle and then uh, allowed to infiltrate into the stone. Okay. So the, the effect was obviously the, the decrease of, uh, of uh, runoff on, on site. Our last slide that doesn't say thank you, but uh... Um, maybe take the board. This, this is the site plan for 884 uh, with the existing basins. Maybe just to walk the board again through which ones you were able to um, remove the variances for and which ones get the extra mitigation across the street. Sure. This is, so this is a sheet that was uh, part of our um, application in 2021 um, and shows the four basins in question um, and the two basins in the front, basin one and basin two. We were able to modify and uh, able to um, uh, make them compliant uh, with the rules. Uh, basins three and four, as I mentioned, they're they're very very close to um, environmentally uh, sensitive areas, um, and in order to comply with the rules, we would have to expand those basins and then go into the environmentally restrictive areas. And and uh, the topography also was not. Uh, working in our favor as well. So um, we could not change those two basins. Right. Ultimately, the additional mitigation removes the two variances that were approved, but doesn't create any new uh, waiver of variance conditions um, with this new work? No, no matter. So um, with that, happy to answer any uh, questions that uh, the board or professionals may have, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Cohen. Thanks. Um, Mr. Fick, I think you mentioned in order for a mitigation plan to qualify, it must discharge to the same water course as the um, project itself. Do you have uh, on the aerial view, are you able to show us what water course all of these are discharging to? It's, uh, it's all going to the uh, Mountain Brook, um, which essentially goes through um, the same watershed, everything kind of flows into the into the mountain brook. Um, Does it show on the uh, on one of the aerials? This one might. Yeah, it's not really too clear. close in, but it's not really clear on this one. However, there are tributaries. There's there's one that goes through um, through the main campus. Um, there's another one on the other side of. Um, of 884, uh, 884 Great Road. It's on the west side and everything kind of meets up at some point. Um, so it's, it's all part of the same um, watershed. Um, so therefore, you know, everything, everything essentially flows, um, you know, all these watersheds actually flows in the same water course. Okay. So when you talk about the west side, you're talking the top of the page here? Yeah, if you turned it, yeah, it's, to the, it's yeah. above, above the soul. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions from board members? Um, seeing none, I believe that I will uh, open the meeting to public comment. We have three members of the public. If you'd like to comment on this application, please raise your hand and we'll move you over. Um, not seeing any hands raised. Uh, from our three three attendees, uh, so going once, going <laughs> twice. Okay, we will now close public comment. Thank you very much. Uh, 
does the board David? Do you have, yeah, I'm sorry. I had just one more question that I sure. forgot to ask before, which is um can I know that the there there was a prior mitigation project which was to upgrade a nearby basin. Can you tell can someone tell us first of all where that uh mitigation project was located and secondly um if you know why this new mitigation project is preferable to that other mitigation project. Right, you bring up the okay. So underneath basin two, there between um, just along old, just along the Great Road, there's an existing basin there. It's just south of the new entrance uh, that's just constructed for the for the eighty four development. So that was that was a basin that was constructed back in 2010 to between 2010 and 2012. Uh, it does not meet the current New Jersey green infrastructure standards. Um, it, it exceeds the drainage area required as a 2.5 acre maximum contributory drainage area. Um, and unfortunately, DEP requires no more than two and a half acres that drains into your um, green infrastructure uh, facility. Um, so that was not, and, and also, I believe there was also another requirement. Um, I don't remember what, what that was exactly, but that was one of the, that was the primary one is that, you know, it just, it just didn't meet, didn't check off the boxes um, as far as the green infrastructure rules. So unfortunately it was designed to compensate for future development. They, they built, Pinnaker built it to, um, um, you know, for future development. And at the time it was, more or less state of the art, you know, current um, green infrastructure at that time um, standards. But unfortunately, under the current rules, uh, it does not it does not meet those uh, new standards. Yeah, Ms. Mr. Cohn, I can answer that very quickly. This was in the early early phases or early days of the new Princeton ordinance and the new DEP stormwater rules. When um, well, I'll be frank. Even DEP was trying to figure out how to apply them, and there was an existing detention, existing bioretention basin right along Great Road that Ten Acre had built maybe ten years ago, roughly speaking, to do just this. They didn't need that basin; they didn't need the entire basin, but they enlarged it so that it would be could be used for future development on the site rather than have to build small basins every time there was a new parking lot addition, let's say. And so at the time with the new ordinance, the new rules, this basin being built functioning perfectly, it was like the ideal mitigation site. It was, it's already there, it's functioning. And so we decided, good, that's a good mitigation site. As the rules, let's say, shook out and people understood exactly what they meant, it turns out that no, that was not a good mitigation site because it was treating too much water. <laughs> it had a, it was, which didn't make a lot of sense, but I'll skip the editorializing. So working with Tom, working with Tom, we needed to find another mitigation site on the 10 acre property that, that would, would not be too big. And turns out this one was perfect. Two things I also want to point out. One is Tom mentioned that this this proposed mitigation site was already a, a treatment measure. It's important to note, though, that that treatment measure was built by Ten Acre as on their own. It was it was not meant to mm -hmm. be providing treatment for any development. It was not part of any project approval. It was simply something that Ten Acre, on their own initiative, went ahead and built. So what Tom has done has taken that existing treatment measure and brought it up to current standards, enlarged it, and but not too big, so it doesn't treat too much water. Uh, and so now that was that was the curve that was thrown early on, that the mitigation site was technically too big. And so Tom had to find a new one. The other thing I want to point out, and, and Tom was just to clarify for the record, the requirements for a mitigation site require that the mitigation be located not in the same watershed because that's a pretty nebulous term but within the same as as hydrologic unit code 
that the U.S. Geological Survey has established. Now, it's called a HUC, H-U-C, 14. They have at least 14 levels of, of HUCs. The mitigation measure must be within the same HUC 14 area as the project that requires the mitigation. And this certainly does, it meets that requirement. However, this portion of the site doesn't go directly into Mountain Brook, which then drains into the Stony Brook. It drains into the Stony Brook directly. Eventually, it takes a quite a while to get there. So it's not the same watershed. This, this area does not drain to the Mountain Brook like the mitigation site will, but they both drain to the same Huck 14 as required by the uh, by the rules. Just again, for the record, I want to make sure that's clear. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe, for the, mm -hmm. extra, the additional detail. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, are there any other questions or comments from the board members? Uh, and if not, then would someone like to uh, make a motion on this application? David, I see you making a motion. Thank you very much. I'm happy to move to approve the uh, modification to the site plan. Thank you. And is there a second? I'll second. second. Oh, I, I, heard, I heard Julie mm -hmm. first. OK, thank you very much. Dan Weissman has his hand up. Dan? Uh, not a second, uh, but. Uh... <laughs> Just wanted to comment. We had uh, three staff comments in the staff report and are requesting if those can be made conditions of approval. Dan, can we go over them for a second? Is one Absolutely. of them a 4.0B staff comment? Yes. Okay, and then the second one is um, 5.01? Yes. Oh, and the third is, I'm sorry, um, 4.0, J1, correct? Yes. Great. I right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy, do you have any comments on those? No, no. We're happy to comply with uh, all of the all of the comments uh, from, from the memorandum. Terrific. Thank you very much. So the motion has been made by Mr. Cohen, seconded by Ms. Capazzoli. Uh, Curry, would you like to call the roll, please? Uh, certainly. Ms. Capazzoli? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Nuka? Yes. Ms. Perlmutter? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And Thank you. Again, special thanks to staff. This has been a long time coming of, of collaboration, um, and we're very appreciative of the the working relationship uh, in 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 figuring all this all out. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for those comments, Mr. Kennedy. Um, moving ahead, we are going to open the uh, the second application that we had here tonight, simply to carry it to a further meeting. Uh, this is the Estate Shore LLC uh, minor subdivision with variances, located at four seventy nine Jefferson Road. Block 5408, Lot 1, file number P2323-403MS. Uh, Jerry or Justin, do you have any comments you'd like to make at this time? Or I do not. Okay. okay. I, when, when is it being carried to? We do not have a date at this point. Then we can't carry it, can we? Oh. No, uh, not really. They're going there. The applicant is required to renotice when a date is determined after we receive the plans for review. So, Jerry, what is the appropriate thing to do? Is do we table it or since we can't carry it? Yeah, I mean, the only way we could carry it if we carried it to a, a date certain with the intention of um, probably not considering it at that point, which I don't think is a good idea. So I uh, yeah I think what we what we need to do is table it. Okay, I apologize for using the wrong terminology in that case. So we will table this application until such date to be determined. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that is the extent of our agenda for this evening. Uh, there's a uh, one more one more item that I think <laughs> Mr. Cohen is ready to, uh, <laughs> to jump on. I'll move uh, to adjourn. Yeah. There has been a, a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? 
Freddie, go ahead on this one. <laughs> I second. <laughs> we'll go with Freddie on the, on the second. Thank you both very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much, everybody. You made it a very simple night for me. <laughs> good job. Thank you, Owen. Good job, Owen. Thank good you very much. Well done. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good night. <laughs>